I am Jen Rosenbaum, and I am shamelessly feminine. But I wasn't always. So what does it mean to be a woman? I thought I had it figured out. About eight years ago, I was living the life that a woman should live. I had a beautiful daughter. I had a loving husband. I kept a beautiful house, and I was happy. But my world was rocked when we were trying to have another baby, and we couldn't. I thought to myself, how could I be a woman and not protect my babies in my own body? How could I be a woman and feel ashamed, be depressed, withdrawn? I didn't know. But I did know that if I wanted to embrace my femininity, if I wanted to rediscover it, then I needed to find beauty again in the world. This was a need, you guys. It was not a want. I needed to find beauty. How am I supposed to raise a beautiful daughter to be a beautiful woman if I didn't know how to do it myself? So naturally, I went out and I bought a camera. <laughs> and the camera was such a great tool for me. It allowed me to see the world. It allowed me to observe everything that was happening and hide from it at the same time. I got to see other people's smiles, other people's memories, everybody else's laughter. I photographed a few weddings, photographed a few kids, and then one day, somebody asked me to take boudoir photos of her, and it changed my entire life. You see, most people think that boudoir photography is about sex. It's about women flaunting their sexuality, about women being objectified. Some people even see it as disgusting, but I don't. I see it as a woman celebrating her femininity, her unique femininity, without any shame whatsoever. Not shame from the outside world, and not shame from herself. I was full of shame during that time. I started booking clients pretty quickly, as this was an upcoming trend. And I saw these women, they would send me pictures of themselves, and I thought, man, these women have their shit together. They're beautiful, they're smart, they're going through great experiences in their life, and they're happy. I want to be like that. I want to live without shame. But it wasn't until I started meeting them that I realized they too had their stories and they too had their shame. This is Joy. Joy came to me at the end of a very bitter and disgusting divorce. Her ex-husband made her feel like garbage. He left her on the side of the road for a newer model. And what you guys might see here is a transformation. Everybody looks at this picture and says, wow, you have a great makeup artist and hairdresser. What a transformation. But I don't see it that way. I see this as a butterfly coming out of her cocoon. This is actually who Joy really is. She just forgot. Somebody else was telling her other lies and other things for so long that she started to believe it. I had the opportunity to say, Joy, this is who you really are. This is Kristen, and I actually just shot her recently for the second time. The first time she came to me, she was almost manic. She was very busy telling me what to do and what her best angles are and what looks best on her and how she should pose and what she should wear. I left the session exhausted. She told me after about her struggles with eating disorders. She was a prisoner in her own body. I mean, and you can tell just by being around her that it was hard for her to even just be present. She came back to me the second time to shoot her, 15 pounds heavier and happier than she'd ever been. This week, I said to her, hey, Kristen, I'm doing a TEDx talk. Will, you know, help me out. Give me a little bit more. I know we speak a lot, but tell me a little bit more about what this session meant to you. I don't have enough time to tell you what she wrote. <laughs> But the beautiful part of it was that she told me she's no longer in jail. She's no longer in the jail in her body. And that thankfully the sessions had something to do with that. This is Carrie. Carrie had a coworker tell her that her ripe old age of 42 means that she's washed up. That a 42-year-old woman can't be sexy, she can't be happy, she can't be successful, because her best years are behind her. 
She came to me to prove him wrong, but the truth of the matter it really proved herself wrong and all those voices in her head that kept saying, maybe he's right, maybe he's right. She now knows he's not right, and she has the best years of her life coming soon. Suzanne is beautiful, isn't she? She doesn't let herself be seen that often because she has a lot of health issues, things that you can't necessarily see on camera, but burdens that she carries with her all the time. She said, Jen, I just want to look beautiful. Just help me see beauty. People tell me I'm beautiful, but I just don't believe them. Help me see it. Her smile was captivating. Her body is slamming. <laughs> She's gorgeous. And she finally got a chance to see that as well. And this is Marie. Marie came to me to celebrate her 40-pound weight loss. It was actually a very emotional shoot. I thought she was coming to celebrate, and it was going to be happy, and she was going to be so excited to be in front of the camera. But she started telling me about this awful boss that she had. He always put her down. He always took an opportunity to tell her how awful she was doing her job. She told me after the shoot, she printed the pictures, and she put them on her desk. Every time he yelled at her or degraded her, she looked at the images, and she reminded herself that she was worthy. She finally quit that job, bought a beautiful apartment, and is traveling the world and doing everything she wants to be doing in life, because she knows she's worthy now. Last but not least, we have Jen. Now, when you look at this image, Jen is young, she's beautiful. What does she have to be worried about? Does everybody come into boudoir or in the world have problems? I don't understand. But the truth is, there's a common thread. We all want to find happiness. Jen may look beautiful and happy, but at her young age, she's a widow. Her husband died tragically. At the time, she had an eight-year-old daughter, and she wrote to me and said, Jen, please help me find my smile. I haven't smiled in years. How do I raise a daughter if I don't know how to smile? So we found it. I have good news for you guys. I'm a pro photographer, but you don't have to be a pro photographer to make a woman feel amazing. In fact, a lot of you are going to do it without cameras. But in this day and age of social media, I mean, we hear everybody here talking today about likes, and affirmations. Don't you want to make people look good, even in the pictures you take with your cell phone? I'm going to give you guys five tips to make women look amazing in photos and feel amazing when they see them. The first one is chin out and down. Somewhere along the line of women being born, we get a handbook. And in the handbook, it says, to be a woman, you need to raise your chin every time somebody takes a picture of you to avoid a double chin. So anytime I raise my camera and I say to a woman, can you just stand there? This is Lauren. Lauren, can you just stand there and put your hands on your waist? They do this. They just look at me like this. Now, she looks beautiful. She's a beautiful girl. But when I ask her to stick her chin out and down, almost like you're pointing to the floor, with your chin, you guys see that? It's a little slight movement. You don't want to go too far, or else you have no neck. <laughs> a little slight movement. It makes her eyes look bigger. It makes her neck look better. You see, guys, I don't believe in slimming somebody down all the time. I believe in making them look as good as they look in real life, if not better. Of course, I'm always aiming for if not better, <laughs> but we want to at least make them look as good as they look in real life. This way, we don't have to spend all those hours in Photoshop. We don't have to manipulate our photos. I believe in proportion. If I lined 10 women up on this stage right now that were all a size 4, they would all have different bodies. If I lined up 10 women that were a size 20, they would all have different bodies. I don't pose for the size jeans that they wear. I pose for what looks good on the woman specifically. I pose each woman differently. I look at how each woman is proportioned. In this case, Lauren looks so much more in proportion with her chin out and down. That's what she really looks like. Arms away from the body. This is a really important one. I don't care if she's wearing clothes or she's not wearing a lot of clothing or whatnot, but when a woman stands like this, she looks like a square or a rectangle. In our eye, we're measuring her body from here to here. Right? You guys see that? If you ever see a picture of me on Facebook, which I hope you're all going to be my friends after today, <laughs> if you ever see a picture of me on Facebook or anywhere, you'll always see I have at least one arm up. Okay? It's changing the shape of my body, and it's making me actually look as small as I really am. This is a perfect example of that. This is Lauren again, and this is the same exact pose. 
The first one, I just have her standing up against the wall, and she has her arms down. Now, if you squint, she looks like a rectangle, doesn't she? She's just a big rectangle. This would be even worse, like in, in regular images, if she was wearing a black sweater or something of that nature with one color, she would just be one big black sweater. That's all you would see. So I took this image, I said, this isn't going to work. She doesn't look so good. I don't see any curves. I'm really all about curves. I always want to see them. So what do I do so I can see her body better? And I just simply asked her to raise her arms up. Now, this might not be a pose that you do every day, but again, in everyday life, maybe just bringing an arm up, maybe bringing two maybe wrapping an arm around somebody else and bringing the other arm up. There's a lot of creative ways to do it. But there's so many pictures where people are just kind of standing there and they go, oh, I look so fat, I look terrible. Is that really what I look like? People say that all the time, right? Do I really look like that? No, by the way, Lauren doesn't really look like that, but she does really look like that. Much more flattering. Weight away from the camera. This is a big one. Again, you guys, this is about proportion, not just about making a woman look smaller. In fact, in this day and age, a lot of women don't want to look smaller. It's actually a really beautiful thing. There's like a booty revolution going on in this world right now. So six years ago, when people would come to me and say, can you make my butt look smaller? Now they're all saying, can you make it look bigger? So sometimes it's a matter of making something look bigger. It's usually just about making something look better. These two images were taken one right after the other. This is Jackie. And in this first image here, Jackie has her weight toward the camera. All of the weight is put on the leg toward the camera. So if the camera is here, she's putting all her weight this way. And I know that because her leg is straight and the other one is bent. The other one is not holding any weight at all. So I took the image and I said, hmm, I'm not sure I love it. And I'll tell you why. Not because she looks curvier, but because one thigh looks much more out of proportion compared to the other one. I want to make sure that they're more even. It's more flattering. So I said to her, Jackie, do me a favor. Don't change anything. Just push your hips the other way. Just put your weight on the other leg. Really simple, three-second instruction, if that. And for me, she's much more in proportion in the second image. Her legs look much better. We get a tiny little bit of negative space and a triangle there between her legs, which is a very flattering thing to have compositionally. It's just a very, very small change, but it leads to big results. Hips pushed away from the camera. This is a big one. If you ever watch any runway shows or you look at the celebrity pictures like in Us Weekly, women will be standing or the celebrities will be standing with their legs crossed like this and their tush pushed back from the waist down. It works backwards too when we have a back shot. Okay, they are taking their hips and they're pushing them away from the camera. Everything away from the camera looks smaller towards the camera looks larger. So we're slimming a woman out this way, okay? She should not bend over. This is what we call the fart pose. It's not flattering. <laughs> we just want a little movement from the waist down. Can you see what a difference that makes in this one, in this image here? In this first picture I took and I went, whoa, this is not what she looks like in real life, and it is certainly not better than she looks like in real life. So I just said to her, do me a favor, bring your hips as far back as you possibly can. And do you see how it changed her body shape even? There's no Photoshop in this, you guys. This is completely body manipulation in photography. You know, there's an expression, camera adds 10 pounds. I always say that that's not true. It's the photographer that adds 10 pounds. Last but not least, sometimes actually you're the problem. Sometimes you just want to change your angle. Maybe she's in a beautiful pose. Maybe she looks fantastic. You're just not capturing it the right way. Okay, this is the same exact pose, same exact girl, one second right after the other one. All I did was take a couple of steps to the right, and I took a picture of her. And you know what this does? This tells her, you are beautiful. You are worthy of being seen. Every lie that you tell yourself is untrue. The first picture says, you're right, you're ugly, you're fat, you shouldn't be seen by anybody, so I'm going to hide you. But here, we're showing off her body. We're telling her that she's worthy to be seen. Now, here's the thing. I know it's not always easy to get a woman in front of the camera. It's how I make my living, so I'm well aware of that. There's a lot of excuses I hear all the time. I'm too fat. My butt's too big. I have a big nose. What if somebody judges me? I'm not sure I could be that brave. I'm not sure if I'm worthy. And I know that these are things that go through women's heads because those are the things that go through mine all the time. And the truth of the matter is that I shoot boudoir not just to help other women, but it helps heal me and helps me be shamelessly feminine too. Thank you. <laughs>